Hello there, my very good friends on today's wrestling news. WWE's WrestleMania 37 plans are in the trash can as Vince McMahon rips every almost everything up. Paul White talks about <laughs> WWE trying to send him to the retirement home. We've got WWE's original plans for the NXT Women's Tag Team titles. And Big E reveals which stable he'd have loved to have been a part of if he wasn't in the New Day. I'm Adam Wilborn. And I'm Andy Murray. And this is the news. Okay, let's kick things off by talking about WrestleMania 35. We have a simple report here from 35. Wrestle Votes. 35? That was <laughs> what, a year ago, two years ago. It's Friday, come on, give me a break. WrestleMania 37, what's going on with the card? Report here from Wrestle Votes, short, simple, to the point. Hearing the WrestleMania card is not close to finalized and most of it is back to square one. Oh. Even for recent Vince standards, 29 days out is bad. Um, so what's on deck for WrestleMania? What do we know is kind of set in stone? Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair for the SmackDown Women's title and Roman Reigns or Daniel Bryan versus Edge for the Universal title. Nothing else. Am I missing anything there? I don't think I am. Shane Nothing versus else Braun, confirmed. but that's only because it's his son, so we all know that's Shane, happening. Yeah, Shane versus Braun. We're probably getting Bad Bunny and Damian Priest versus whoever, yeah. The Miz and John Morris, and that might be a thing. Um, but other than that, it's 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 so wide open, isn't it? We might get Drew versus, uh, versus Bobby Lashley for the WWE Championship as well. Um, but... You know, we've spoken before how it's a little bit more understanding if WWE are not as well planned this year as they have been in previous years because the ongoing Global Bastard is so fluid and if you make a plan today, it can change an hour later, right? So it's a very difficult situation they're dealing with. It's unprecedented circumstances. However, we're like four weeks away now from WrestleMania, five weeks away. My maths is terrible. I used to be an accountant, believe it or not. <laughs> um, I, I, and to hear that the whole thing has just kind of been torn up and thrown out and we're going to come up with some new stuff is particularly worrying because you've got to script several weeks of good television uh, leading into these shows. It doesn't bode well uh, for Raw in particular, which is not as consistent as SmackDown, obviously, uh, in the build. I'm not 100% shocked by this because it's WWE Vince McMahon in the year of our Lord 2021. But at the same time, it's a little bit worrying. Yeah, like you say, it's partially explainable by the ongoing global bastard, but you should at least have an idea where all of your titles are going on the road to WrestleMania. Like, is the United States Championship going to be on the card? Like the IC title, you can probably book Big E and Apollo, maybe. But, like... The tag titles, maybe you could argue Street Profits winning back from the Dirty Dogs, but yeah, it's just, the, my concern here is, obviously, you know, traditionally you have the, the, the card planned out from bloody Survivor Series, but if not then, maybe the Royal Rumble. But the fact that nothing's really changed since January is really concerning, and the, the whimsical nature of Vince McMahon's booking makes me concerned that he's gonna go, ah, you know what, pal? What the world title on Bad Bunny? Like, I, I, I honestly am not ruling that out just about yet. Like, yeah. like you say, the, WrestleMania is known for the video packages, you know, showcasing all the stuff that has happened in the build-up. And in the meantime, they've been like, should we do another women's tag team title match with uh, Bianca and Sasha? And you're like, really not concentrating on the important stuff here, guys. I, I'm starting to get more and more worried. I've got to be honest, Andy. Yeah, there's a lot of big time players who don't have clear and obvious and plans you can point towards. Uh, Bailey would be one, yeah. um, but there are lots of other ones. It's it's weird. It's a difficult time. Um, how do you sell, you know, fifty to sixty thousand tickets when you don't have a full card full of like marquee matches and big announcements? Hard to say, um, particularly in the middle of this ongoing global bastard. So we'll see how it pans out, but uh, at the moment, it's looking a little shaky out there. Yeah, good to see WWE haven't uh, overstretched themselves and, I don't know, put two nights of WrestleMania on rather than the traditional, ah, <laughs> oh, bollocks. Yeah. Anyway, we'll see how that one goes. Uh, let's move on and talk about Paul White. He was recently a guest on uh, Renee Paquette's brilliant oral sessions podcast, one of the best podcasts out there that isn't ours. Uh, and he was talking <laughs> about how he was treated in WWE before he left. Uh, basically, uh, he talks about 
not being able to, to grease his own wheels and get things going within WWE, saying I think the biggest thing was the letdown for me of not being able to get something going creatively. But he then continued to talk about WWE effectively, kind of putting him out to pasture off the back of that. He said, it got frustrated trying to knock on the door. They were trying to use me for other things. They wanted me to do the community relations thing, which is something I love to do anyway, but they were trying to do me a favor and I think put me out to Shady Pines. I don't want to be in Shady Pines. I tried to tell them, look, don't put me in Shady Pines. This man is not a fan of Shady Pines, the retirement home, of course, from Golden Girls. Um, uh, I'm not really surprising, to be honest, though, this, Andy. Like, I wasn't like, oh, good, yeah. what, what big plans have they got for Big Show? They brought him back uh, <laughs> and, and had him lose technically on the same night that Drew won the world title. And aside from that, he got attacked from Randy Orton. Like, I'm not like, oh, yeah. quick, got to get Big Show back. Yeah, I don't think there were many people sitting there at home, like you say, going, oh man, they've really got the big, got to get the big show cooking in a storyline um, at the moment. But at the same time, if you're if you're Paul White, of course, and you're just kind of sitting yeah. there not doing anything, you're going to be a bit frustrated. And uh, I think Paul White showed, like, and we we said this at the time when all of these things went down, that he showed he can come in and do a little job in a short-term storyline and put someone over and be quite effective at it. Um, the, the WrestleMania 36 thing was weird, as technically as that match was with Drew was filmed after the Brock match, uh, Paul White headlined WrestleMania 36, uh, technically, yeah. if you if you break it down. Um, but you know, his most recent appearance was kind of getting the piss ripped out of him by Randy Orton and stuff. So it, Paul White's a guy I never thought in a million years would ever leave WWE. So mm. this whole thing has been very interesting. Uh, and hey, look, he's on Dark Elevation now. That starts on Monday. They announced the first card. Riho and Maki Ito yes. are the main event for the first show. I'm looking forward to seeing what he does. Paul White has always seemed like a really nice guy. Everything yes. I've heard about him has been nothing but positive. So uh, I'm very happy for him. And I hope that this new chapter of his career is more fulfilling than the last one sounds like it was. Yeah, nice to hear in these later years he's still driven and still wants to get involved in stuff rather than just collect a pay paycheck. Fair play for that, Paul. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Uh, reporter here from Brian Alvarez on Wrestling Observer Live talking WWE's original plans for the NXT Women's Tag team titles now if you watched this show at uh, the nxt show this week or you heard us uh, on the news yesterday or if you've even just consumed the news somewhere else you'll know that the setup for this was a little bit contrived the heels won a tournament the heels were screwed painting them as sympathetic and then the babyface interrupted them and then the babyfaces won the titles on the same night they were announced it was a whole deal it was a whole big bit of business but brian alvarez has revealed wwe originally planned on having the women's tag team titles presented to the winners of the first ever women's dusty classic tag team tournament that was dakota kai and raquel gonzalez of course and um, but the belts simply weren't ready <laughs> at the time uh wwe rushed through the tournament and it left the scenario where they are at now. That's how they came up with the screw job finish for Kai and Gonzalez versus Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler the other week. Um, they were like kind of left scrambling and the belts now somehow have ended up on Shotzi Blackheart and Ember Moon. Um, so it, it's a whole rush job by the sounds of things. There's no word on what caused this exactly, but it definitely sounds like WWE could have simplified this a little bit. Yes, exactly. So lots of bad booking have come off the back of this, in my opinion. And yeah, just another piece of evidence to add to the massive pile of maybe WWE should consider more long-term booking. Because yeah. yeah, I mean, to be fair to whoever was making the belts, I guarantee WWE turned around like me doing my homework in year seven <laughs> the night before and was like, got any spare tag titles to go about? You haven't? <laughs> well, well, we're going to have to do something else. Just tack on that little extra bit on the Dusty Classic trophy. Like, oh, the women have got a, a column now. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, bad stuff, this. And uh, I just feel, felt it, it really undermined them to be like, here's your new champion. And lose them immediately. He also didn't help that Raquel Gonzalez was like, oh, well, at least we were the first ones to hold them. It's like, yeah, you held them for about an hour. Uh, yeah. But I'm happy for her now. She's off to, to get into a great feud, I reckon, with Io Shirai. But, yeah, just think, not even long term, longer than two weeks ahead, WWE. Please, God. Uh, right, let's finish up by talking uh, about Big E, who did a brilliant interview recently with... Uh, Oh, with me! What cultures Adam Wilborn, the whole video of which uh, is going to be out later today on this channel. He is 
genuinely one of the nicest men in wrestling. Well worth checking that out. It'll also be out as a podcast, What Culture Wrestling, wherever you get your podcasts from. Uh, but I was chatting to Big E A about his fantastic new Kickstarter, uh, Our Heroes Rock, which is creating this animated series uh, for uh, for children about black history. Go and support it, ourheroesrock.org. But also about which stable he'd have loved to have been a part of if he wasn't in the New Day. He's obviously talked on that 24 special he did about being in the Shield. And he revealed, of course, this might feel like a lazy answer, but uh, the Nation of Domination was yes. that was that was that was the one as a kid. I just liked uh, their presence. I was also a huge Ron Simmons fan because, for one, I grew up a big Florida State fan as you know, as a as a Florida kid, and he was I think he was a Heisman uh, Trophy candidate, which if you don't know is almost impossible to do as a nose tackle. He was one of the best defensive linemen uh, to, to, ev to ever do it. Uh, so Ron Simmons uh, was was my guy. And just again, like Mark Henry, who was one of the strongest men to ever walk the earth. So from, from that standpoint too, just really being into his strength stuff, they just were cool. I mean, it's, it really just boils down to that. They, those guys were just real cool. But yeah, I feel like he could have really fit in there and, and I suppose it's, it's something that he tried to morph the new day into, but Vince was having none of it. That's what he said, at least. Yeah, there's all kinds of great stuff in this interview. Uh, Adam Wilborn did a tremendous job, and he always does yeah. a tremendous job. But uh, yeah, I mean, stay tuned in particular for the Arn Anderson story that brought a smile yeah. to my cragged old features. Check that out when it comes out. Yeah, it should be out this afternoon UK time, so... 12 hours, 12 hours, I'm putting a, a countdown on it. But yes, uh, great to chat to him and hopefully we get to do that more in future. But uh, yeah, uh, what, check that out on the channel or as a podcast, as I said. Right, let's move on to your Twitter questions. At WhatCultureWWE, of course, if you want to get in touch with us. First question today comes from Mad Pancakes, who says, as MJF's new team beat up the Inner Circle this week, would you like to see them face off at Double or Nothing but it's a stadium stampede <laughs> match? I love the first one, so why not have fun and bring it back? I loved the first stadium stampede match. I think it came across at the perfect time when I was a bit oh. down on pro wrestling in the global bastard. I was like, yeah, it's not much fun. And then that happened. And I was like, oh, God, okay, it is fun. Yeah, this is great. One of my favorite comedy matches ever. However, however, for this feud, I personally would prefer a more serious presentation. Uh, just considering all the things that MJF and Jericho have been through, I think they should have the tone of a real blood feud, of real gang warfare. And for me, if you're going to do this big, big uh, stable versus stable match, blood and guts, baby. Yes, it's something Michael Sidgwick has been campaigning for for a long, long time. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is the perfect thing to use blood and guts for, I reckon. Uh, although yeah. I would like to see a stadium stampede match at some time in the future. But like you say, I don't think it really fits for this you, feud. Uh, it's like too much the... comedy for, for a, a blood feud, like you say. Yeah, exactly. The stadium stampede, you could do like the Dark Order in one. Imagine John Silver in a stadium stampede. Yes against Matt Hardy and his gang of lads. Why not? There you go. There's your stadium rising in, stampede. Rising in on that lawnmower. More on that later, by the <laughs> way. Second question today comes from Twitter Snab, who says, what do you stallions think about Big E losing his IC title to Apollo and bringing back the five count gimmick uh, as a redemption or something to prove arc after that loss? So I personally would prefer Big E to have a long ass run with the, the Intercontinental title, like a year. I'm a big fan of crazy long title uh, reigns. I think that would be very beneficial to him. However, I love the five count gimmick. I thought it, yeah. it was such a unique way in NXT uh, in particular to, to set him apart and make him look dominant. And when he was doing the chalk at his entrance, like at oh, the top yeah. of the ramp and yeah, getting ready to go and everything. He's brought that back recently, of course. But yeah, I, I think that would be cool. I'd love to see him do that again. It's just a great way to make him look like the baddest guy on the roster, isn't it? Because who yeah. else can keep someone down for a five count? Big E. There we go. I bring back the five count, but I've got to say, I really do like this new Apollo Crews character. I chat to Big E about it and get his thoughts on that and who he'd like to face at next year's WrestleMania. You'll have to check out the full interview to find out his answers to both of those things. Uh, but if he's going to lose it to anyone, yeah, this new Apollo Crews character is a great person to lose it to, in my opinion. Excited to see what happens between the two of them when Big E, of course, returns to SmackDown tonight. Final question today comes from another birthday boy, Andy Murray. Bryant the Gimpy, who says, Happy Good birthday. day, gents. It's my birthday and I had a question. Happy birthday, Bryant. Uh, we have seen most people come back from being away. Could we see Keith Lee return as a heel? What are your thoughts? Could you also give me an iconic 
for my birthday. There you go. Uh, thanks very much. Cheaper than a present, isn't it, Andy? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Not for my eardrums. Uh, Oh, Keith Lee is a heel. Um, it's not really something I've thought about a lot because for me, Keith Lee works really well as like a cocky baby face, which yeah. is kind of what he's been for a long time. Who knows? He's really, really great and limitless and all of this, but you know, usually does the right thing uh, in situations. I definitely think he's got that kind of character that could transition over to a heel, um, but I do think there's a lot of uncharted territory left to explore with him as a babyface before then. So uh, maybe somewhere down the line, I think that could be a really cool thing. But for now, I would like to see him come back and have a really good babyface run. As someone who we got to work with in WCPW, he is almost too nice to pull off a heel yeah. game, but I guarantee he could. But I'll be honest, I'll just take him being used on Monday Night Raw. Yeah. What are they waiting for? Get on with it. He's what He should be one of the guys if they're like, oh, I don't know what to do about WrestleMania. Put Keith Lee on it and it'll be mint. It's not, really not difficult. Not but, hard. Yeah, so this is Vince. Depends on what side of bed he wakes up, I suppose. And let's move on to today's and finally, I just wanted to give a nod to Evil Uno uh, on Twitter who shared that clip of uh, Hangman Page and his new ride on Lil Mower that he can take all the gong, gang except for uh, Alan Angels on to go and get ice cream. <laughs> uh, and I just saw this tweet from, from Evil Uno yesterday, Andy, that says, Evil Uno has found the Dark Order's wacky races vehicle. And I thought... Oh my God, I really want to see a wrestling wacky racers. So I thought we could get you guys to suggest some of the teams and some of the vehicles they'd be driving in the comment section below for West. I knew I was going to mess that up. Wrestling wacky racers. What a show back in the day, Andy. Oh man, think of the options. You could have Nick Comarotto as Captain Caveman. You could have the Dark Order as the Ant Hill Mob, maybe. Uh, Vince McMahon as Dick Dastardly. There's all kinds of possibilities. Uh, love the wacky races, man. Every day before school, a young Andy Murray would watch that show. So, yeah. It good. was just so good. You've already got someone called Penelope who could be Penelope. It's right there. It's right there. Make this happen, someone. If only... Well, Tony Khan has got unlimited money. Please, Tony. <laughs> uh, let us know, though, your teams in the comments section below and your thoughts on everything we've discussed today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to get notified of that brilliant, brilliant Big E interview. Not my words, the words of Top Gear magazine. Uh, you can let us know your thoughts as well on Twitter at WhatCultureWWE. Watch there, you can follow both of us. You can follow Andy Murray at... At Andy H. Murray. The H stands for HIP! <laughs> Again, <laughs> what? Uh, what called dressing room? You get your podcast wrong for Daily Wrestling Podcast. I forgot to mention that earlier. You're going to have the SmackDown preview and that Big E interview on there as well. Follow me on Twitter at Adam Wilborn. Follow us all at What Culture WWE. Have a great weekend. For now, my thanks to Andy Murray. Thank you for joining us. Thanks to Big E for being a top bloody bloke. And we will see you soon. Mm.